Hey guys, what's up? In the following videos, we will make our first image using Enscape. We will learn the basics of the software, its interface and navigation, the basics of lightning and also materials, and we will learn how to insert the assets and how to configure the final rendering. So, we will take a quick look at basically all the features of Enscape, but of course, all these features will be better investigated throughout the course. So, first of all, we have to open SketchUp. I'll click here. I'll choose the simple model. And if you have already installed Enscape, this window will pop up with a few informations about the software. So here you can check some shortcuts for navigation. Also, you'll get to know the main buttons of Enscape. But if you don't want to show this window every time you open SketchUp, you can just click here and it won't open again. Otherwise, you can just close this window. And now, if you don't have the Enscape toolbar appearing here, you can just right-click anywhere here and choose Enscape. So here we have the Enscape toolbar and you can leave this toolbar wherever you want. I normally drag this here and I like actually to position it on top of this getting started SketchUp toolbar. And in this toolbar, you can already notice that we have some very important functions. Here we can click to start and escape. Here we have the asset library where we can browse for 3D models that we can place in our scene. We have the material editor and many other buttons that will be very important to our workflow. And to start our exercise, I would like to open a 3D scene that I have. So I'll click here in File, Open. I'll choose this file that I've provided called Kitchen01. So this is a very simple model of a kitchen in an apartment. And to start experimenting with Enscape, we'll click here, Start Enscape. And we can already notice that even without making any change, we already have a very different model from the one we can see in SketchUp. We already have some kind of light that is producing color bleed. We already have some reflections appearing in some objects in the scene. So even without making any change, we can already see that Enscape is doing an interesting job here, producing a much more realistic image than the one we see in SketchUp's window. And what's more interesting, obviously, is that we have this rendering happening in real time. So if we make any changes to our model, we will see those changes being updated here in a very fast way. And Enscape is generating a very photorealistic image. And of course, we would like to improve this image here by changing the sunlight's position and materials and exploring many other features within Enscape. But for now, I would like to talk a little bit about this Enscape window. We have a couple of ways to work with Enscape and we can position this window in many places here, depending on our workflow. And for sure, the most efficient way to lay out these windows is to use two monitors. And this way, in one monitor, we can leave the SketchUp model and in the other one, we can put the Enscape rendering so that we can check the model and the render at the same time in two big screens. However, many users don't have access to two monitors. So I'm gonna give a couple of hints so that we can be efficient here using just one monitor. For example, if we are not going to make many changes in this SketchUp model, we can basically increase this window so that we can have a very good look at the rendering itself. And here in Enscape, we have navigation controls that we can use directly in Enscape's window. So we don't have to go to the SketchUp model to choose an angle. So one option would be to leave this window with a very big size covering the SketchUp interface. Another way of organizing our layout here would be 
to leave Enscape's window as it is. And in this case, something that can be annoying is that whenever we click here in SketchUp, that window disappears and we have to use the shortcut Alt tab to bring it back. And if you are using older versions of Enscape, you have to deal with this. And one way to try to solve this problem would be to minimize a little bit this window here. And we can now place this window right next to it so that now we can click in any of these windows and we can see them both at the same time. But if you are using the newest versions of Enscape, you can basically leave this window here on top and we can solve this problem by clicking here in this Enscape window settings. Here we can click in preferences and we can basically turn on this pin Enscape window option here and now we can leave this window wherever we want and we can click here in this SketchUp model and we can click here once again and this window won't simply disappear. And another option to lay out our windows here would be to basically drag this Enscape window to the right side or we can also drag it to the left side and then we can choose our SketchUp model here. And now we have on the left side the SketchUp model and on the right side we have the Enscape window and this also works quite fine. And if you prefer, you can hide this default tray to get more space for the SketchUp model. So we can basically click in the spin button and we can make this default tray hideable. Or we can also basically drag the default tray to the other side. We can click this button here and we can leave it here if we prefer. So there are many ways to organize our viewport layout and you can just choose the one you feel more comfortable with. And talking now about the navigation options here in Enscape, you have probably already noticed that they are similar to the options that we are used to in SketchUp. So if we use the scroll here, you can notice that we are zooming in and out, just as it happens with SketchUp. But if we press and hold the scroll button of the mouse, we will be able to use the pen and we are actually shifting our camera view to the right, to the left or top or bottom. If we hold down the left mouse button, we will orbit our camera. Actually, when we use this option, we are standing in the same place, but we can look all around our space. And if we hold down the right mouse button, we are actually orbiting the camera. So the target is in the same place, but the camera is traveling around the scene. So we can basically move and look around using our mouse. But here in Enscape, we have also a lot of options using hotkeys. So if you press the H key, you can check here most of the hotkeys that we can use when we work with Enscape. For example, just as in video games, we can use the WASD keys to move around. W, we can move forward. S key, we can move backwards. The A key, we can move to the left. And with the D key, we can move to the right. We can also use the E key and the Q key to move up and down. And here we are in this flying mode as we can fly throughout our scene. Here we can see that we have the mouse options that we have already learned. So we can use the left click, the right click and the scroll. And there is one interesting feature here called teleport that happens when we double click anywhere in the scene. So if I double click here, we immediately shift to this area. I'm going to double click up there, check. So it's also an interesting way of moving around by double clicking. And then we have some other hotkeys which are responsible for changing the time of the day or shifting between the views of our scene. But um, there are a couple of other hotkeys which I consider to be very important, which are the control and the shift keys that helps us to move faster around our scene. So for example, if I use the W key and also press the shift key, 
our movement is much faster than before. And if we use the control key together with the W or the S, we move even faster. And we can also use the control and shift key together with the scroll. So if I'm using the scroll to zoom in and out, and I press the shift key, our movement will be much faster. And if I use the control key, it will be even faster. And one interesting way to navigate around our space is actually to combine the mouse options with the hot keys. So for example, if I use the W key to move forward and hold the left mouse button, I can actually move around and look around our scene. So this is a very interesting way to browse around our space using the keys together with the mouse options. And as I've mentioned before, we have two navigation modes. So up here we have the fly mode and the walk mode. We are now using the fly mode. So we can actually fly around our scene. We can use the E key and the Q key to define a hive and then we can basically fly around. But if we change our mode to the walk mode, we can either do this by clicking up here or we can also use the space bar. Now we are not flying, we are actually walking around and we are also hitting the objects. So we cannot go through any walls or any objects in the scene since we are actually simulating a realistic walkthrough. But if we change the mode to the flying mode, you can notice that now we won't respect any walls or any objects and we can basically do whatever we want here in our scene. Okay, so we've checked many ways we can walk around our model in the Enscape window. And once you practice a lot using the hotkeys and using the mouse buttons, you will probably get used to it. But if you prefer to control your views still using SketchUp's model, you can simply click this button here called Synchronize Views. And now, whenever we make any change in our view in SketchUp, our Enscape window will basically update. So if you don't like the idea of browsing our 3D space here in the Enscape window, you can basically keep doing this using the SketchUp model, but you have to remember to keep this function active. And now, whenever we make any change here, our Enscape window will basically show the same thing.